Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. On Saturday morning, Pope Francis travelled to Asti for a private visit to his relatives who still reside there. He mentioned how this trip gave him a chance to rediscover and savour his roots. The Holy Father also received an honorary citizenship from Mayor Maurizio Rossero on the second day of his visit. This is in recognition of his dedication to world peace and his daily words of solidarity and fraternity. Pope Francis offered the Angelus prayer to conclude the Mass on the Solemnity of Christ the King in Asti before expressing gratitude to the community for their gracious welcome. The Holy Father then went on to describe the time in which we are living as a famine of peace. He urged everyone to consider the various regions of the world that are plagued by violence, paying particular attention to Ukraine. He also prayed for the victims of the devastating fire in a camp for refugees in Gaza. US Senators are urging President Joe Biden to rejoin the group of 37 countries that have agreed that there is no international right to abortion. On Thursday, Republican Senators Steve Daines of Montana and James Lankford of Oklahoma introduced a resolution asking Mr Biden to recommit the US to the Geneva Consensus Declaration. This would be to affirm support for the family as the cornerstone of society, the right to life for all people and women's health and well-being. The event was organised by the Institute for Women's Health, a group that advocates for women's health policies. It was attended by a large number of international dignitaries, US lawmakers and non-profit leaders. The declaration signing ceremony was held in the United States in 2020. As many as 35 countries signed on at that time, representing more than 1.6 billion people. Later, during the Biden administration, the United States retracted its signature. On November the 25th, the jury is due to deliver its decision in the trial of a 90-year-old Catholic cardinal in Hong Kong, as well as five other defendants. Cardinal Joseph Zen and five others have been charged with neglecting to register a now-defunct fund established to aid individuals detained in the city's widespread anti-government rallies three years ago. Cardinal Zen was first arrested in May, together with others, including singer Denise Ho and barrister Margaret Ngo, on suspicion of colluding with foreign forces. While they have not yet been charged with national security-related charges, the accused have since been charged for failing to properly register the now-defunct 612 Humanitarian Relief Fund. The case will mainly revolve around whether the 612 Humanitarian Relief Fund is considered an organisation that is obliged to register and when the fund was established. The fund helped pay medical and legal fees for arrested protesters during the anti-government protests in 2019 and later ceased operations in August in 2021. A recent survey commissioned by the Catholic League in the United States found that most Catholics do not believe that the Church should comply with calls to change its principles based on public opinion. Nearly 66% of those surveyed stated that even if they disagreed with a particular principle of the Church, they would not like to see it change. Only 27% said they felt the Church should conform to modern secular stances on social issues. 55% of the group, who said they rarely or never attend Mass, responded that the Catholic Church should not change its positions to meet popular demands. According to the survey, a solid 70% of Catholics would remain as committed or grow even more so if the Church were not to change its positions on social issues. Catholics also acknowledge that changes to a religion's guiding principles to conform to social trends can harm attendance. Pope Francis met Mar Awa III, the Patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East, at the Vatican on Saturday morning. This was the first visit of the head of the Assyrian Church of the East after he was elected Catholicos Patriarch in September in 2021. In a speech, the Holy Father mentioned the strengthening of ties between the churches. He recalled the visits of Mar Dinka IV and Mar Gewargis III as well as the signing of documents such as the Common Christological Declaration and a statement on the situation of Christians in the Middle East. The Pope also welcomed the idea of the Patriarch of having a common date for the celebration of Easter. He also urged both churches to work diligently to celebrate the Eucharist on the same altar. Bishop Jude Ayodeji Arogundade of Nigeria's Ondo Diocese has pleaded with lawmakers in the United Kingdom to push their government and other nations to help address the persecution of Christians. 
According to the bishop, the goal of Boko Haram, the Islamic State of West Africa province, and Fulani herdsmen is to establish an Islamic government in Nigeria and conquer the infidels, that is, Christians and non-Muslims and Muslims who are not as radicalized as they are. The Nigerian bishop pleaded with the government to put an end to the genocide in the West African nation. He instructed parliamentarians to demand that the Muhammadu Buhari-led administration use all available legal and political means to uphold the freedom of the minority and put an end to the widespread killings. The Philippines has ignored calls from a United Nations body to legalise same-sex marriage and enact other legislation that seeks to protect members of the LGBT community from discrimination and to allow divorce. Such recommendations from other UN member states during last week's Universal Periodic Review in Geneva were not acceptable. So said Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Rumuya in his radio programme on Saturday. Ramuya said they want the Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Expression Equality Bill, also known as the Anti-Discrimination Bill, for same-sex marriage to have the same as in their countries. So, that's not acceptable to us. They want a lot to be implemented here. While there are city ordinances that protect the rights of the gay community, activists have expressed their concerns that the absence of anti-discrimination legislation for LGBT individuals and opposition from religious groups and conservative senators could offset their aims. Human rights activists in Hong Kong have written to the city administration to drop the charges against jailed Catholic philanthropist and media mogul Jimmy Lai and to free him immediately. They made this appeal in a letter addressed to the chairperson of the Committee for Safeguarding National Security of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. This committee oversees the Hong Kong Police Force's National Security Department. On December the 1st, 74-year-old Mr Lai will go on trial without a jury for alleged cooperation in violation of the national security law. The detention of Mr Lai and other Hong Kong journalists, including some executives of the now defunct Apple Daily, has gravely weakened trust in the city's legal system and the rule of law. In addition, his international legal team at Doughty Street Chambers has faced intimidation and harassment. Through anonymous emails, they have been warned not to travel to Hong Kong to defend Mr Lai or risk facing action under the subversion law. A biopic depicting the life and martyrdom of St Andrew Kim will be released in theatres on November the 30th in South Korea. Entitled Birth, the movie chronicles the life and demise of the first Korean priest and martyr who was killed at the age of 25 in 1846. Co-produced by the Alma Art Centre and written and directed by Park Hyung Sik, it recounts the history of the introduction of Catholicism to the region. The biopic was previewed at the Vatican a few days ago. The saint went to study in Portuguese Macau after being born in 1821 into a family of Christian converts. He was ordained in Shanghai in 1845, becoming the first Catholic priest in Korea. The movie chronicles his dating return home when the Joseon dynasty persecuted and imprisoned him for his evangelization efforts. He died a martyr the following year. The clearance of the abortion medicine mifepristone by American regulators was challenged in court by anti-abortion groups on Friday. If successful, the lawsuit could limit access to medication abortion across the country. The Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and others filed a lawsuit in a federal court in Amarillo, Texas. They alleged that the US Food and Drug Administration lacked the authority to approve the drug for abortion when it did so in 2000, and that it failed to adequately research its risks for minors. The lawsuit claimed that the FDA failed America's women and girls by approving chemical abortion medications for usage in the country while choosing politics over science. In response to the US Supreme Court's June decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, President Joe Biden's administration took action earlier this year to increase access to medication abortion. On Sunday, thousands marched in the Dominican Republic to participate in One Step for My Family to defend moral values and to promote the idea of the family as the foundation of society. In the Archdiocese of Santiago de los Caballeros, the faithful walked with Archbishop Freddy Breton Martinez. Holy Mass was also celebrated. 
During his homily, the Archbishop exhorted the faithful to protect human life starting from the womb. Since 1884, abortion is fully banned in all circumstances in the Dominican Republic. However, as per studies, 90,000 illegal abortions are carried out in the country every year. Since the US Supreme Court's Dobbs ruling, roughly 70% of threats and attacks against pro-life organisations and churches have been tied to abortion. That is according to FBI Director Christopher Wray. During a hearing of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, Wray reinforced the Bureau's commitment to investigating such crimes. He said, you don't get to engage in violence and we are equal opportunity when it comes to investigating such crimes. He spoke in response to Republican Senator Rick Scott of Florida, who questioned Ray about the FBI's lax response to crimes against churches, pro-life pregnancy centers, and other pro-life organizations motivated by pro-abortion sentiment. According to Ray, approximately 20 field offices are among the agencies looking into offenses against pro-life churches and organizations. He referred to the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, which has prohibited barring access to abortion clinics and houses of worship since 1994. The week-long celebration of the International Red Week campaign, initiated by Aid to the Church in Need to commemorate persecuted Christians, began on November the 16th. The celebration will conclude on November the 23rd with the observance of Red Wednesday. The Pontifical Charity said that this year's theme is Blessed are the Persecuted. As part of the celebration, buildings and landmarks around the world will be illuminated in red light and special prayers will be conducted in different parts of the world. This campaign is being held to raise awareness about Christian persecution around the world and the lack of religious freedom. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.